This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. So this is a very interesting episode. This is an 8-year-old patient who had come to the surgery and on the day of surgery once the dilating drops were put the patient developed an acute episode of angle closure glaucoma. The reason being very obvious the lens was intumescent and it was just waiting to happen the moment pupil dilated she developed a pupillary block glaucoma and the pressure shot up to 50. So obviously the surgery was not done it was postponed she was treated with the anti-glaucoma medications IV mannitol and rescheduled for surgery after 3 days and the third day the pressures were normal but we still kept the pupil undilated so this was an eye where the antechamber is extremely shallow it's about 2 mm and the lens was swollen so in such cases i think it's better not to dilate the pupils in the preoperative area especially the chamber is very shallow it's two or less it's better to give iv mannitol and after mannitol it would be okay to put the dilating drops as we shift the patient to the or so this is what we did and the patient's iop was normal as the patient is being draped the surgery is being done under perival bar anesthesia with a massage well the eye is soft so the side port incisions are made the capsule is stained under air bubble with trypan blue and then the dye is washed off dispersive ovd is placed inside the anterior chamber the 2.8 mm posterior limbal based incision is created time to perform the rexus rexus is a very critical step in this eye simply because we expect it to go out let's see how things turn out the moment i puncture the capsule and lift the flap i can see some of the liquefied cortex just burping out so this is a good sign this indicates that the interlenticular pressure is decreased now because the pressure has been passively released by the egress of this liquefied cortex so the capsule is folded and i'm continuing to do the sharing method as i feel that i'm very much in control so i have a capsular opening which is about 5 mm in a diameter maybe slightly oval so the point i want to emphasize is that if we have a soft eye in these intermittent cataracts the rexus becomes relatively much more predictable and well controlled so i would always uh, prefer to use means and methods to ensure that the eye is soft before performing the rexus so time to perform the fake emulsification the nucleus appears to be slightly denser the superficial epinucleus and cortex is aspirated out the nucleus is stabilized with the second instrument and i'm going to create a small trench in the central part of the nucleus the reason i create this trench is to ensure that i get a firm hold on the core of the nucleus so that there is no torque while trying to divide this dense nucleus so in this case i'm aiming to about 40% depth and with the bevel turned to the right side the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus i want to ensure that the entire length of the tip is buried the sharp particle chopper is placed just in front of the tip and then there is a lateral separation maneuver I can see a full thickness crack traversing up to half the length of the nucleus. The nucleus is rotated 90 degrees and the chopping maneuver is continued. The chopper is placed just in front of the phaco tip and then the lateral separation maneuver is performed. Again as I keep telling it is not wise to expect the nucleus to crack in the first lateral separation maneuver itself we need to have multiple levels of lateral separation maneuver to ensure that the dense posterior plate gives way the nucleus is rotated and the process of dividing the nucleus into smaller fragments is continued we need to remember that the lateral separation maneuver has to be a little bit controlled because the lateral aspects of the edge of the rexus are very much near so when you're trying to aggressively do lateral separation there's always a risk of tugging at the rexus margin and which can tear in these long standing cataracts it we expect the capsules to be relatively friable so one needs to be mindful when you're trying to do this lateral separation maneuvers try to be as controlled as possible I would like to tell myself that the my left hand the non dominant hand should not go beyond the 3 mm radius from the center
So now we have got all the fragments divided and ready for consumption. The settings are changed to the quadrant removal mode. Each of the fragments is then pulled out of the bag and then emulsified. And just watch my left hand as, as it's trying to be on top of the fragment and ensures that the fragment does not jump out and hit the endothelium. So controlling the emulsification of these fragments is critical to ensure a clear cornea postoperatively. There is one fragment where the posterior plate is still not completely separated from its adjacent fragment. Nevertheless, it is gently maneuvered out and then emulsified. So if the attachment is not very thick, then you can pull it out and during the maneuvers it gets separated by its own. That's what happened in this case. Last two fragments are emulsified. That's it, the nucleus emulsification process is done. There's hardly any cortex left here. Gently some of the cortex is aspirated. And some of the cortex I'm just leaving by simply because uh, I would like to put in the lens and deal with it later. Many times the capsule, the zonules are quite weak. So I don't want to risk any PC rupture at this stage. So just go ahead and place the lens first and then do the removal of these lens fibers later on. OBD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. That's it. The case is done. The ports are hydrated. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.